There is only a week left in the race for the federal conservative leadership. In the final days, the candidates are pushing to win as many outstanding ballots as possible. Due to the pandemic, though, the entire election is being decided by mail-in votes. More than 250,000 members have received ballots. They must be submitted by next Friday. The party will take the weekend to process and count the ballots. Our next guest says there's one leadership candidate who may surprise some people this week. Corey Tanike is a managing partner with Rubicon Strategy and the former director of communications for Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Uh, he declared he, he will remain neutral in this leadership campaign. He joins us now from Kawach in BC. Uh, Corey, you wrote a CBC op-ed uh, about one candidate. Uh, I read it through a really intriguing read. Tell us who this candidate is and why you wrote about her. Uh, the candidate's Leslyn Lewis, and she's uh, sort of a surprise, I think the big surprise of the leadership race. Uh, she was someone who was virtually unknown in the Conservative Party prior to this race, um, but someone with a, a really uh, unusual and impressive uh, background. Uh, a successful lawyer, uh, someone who uh, has uh, achieved uh, you know, things professionally uh, outside of politics. Um, but uh, is also, you know, female uh, in downtown Toronto and uh, an ethnic minority. Uh, these are things that um, uh, are not uh, normally what you would expect in uh, uh, someone who, you know, is, is new to the party and attracted it, but it speaks to a lot of the things and uh, traits and types of people that the Conservatives need to do better with if they want to form government. And so she kind of embodies a lot of those those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're going to get into that and dig deep. But, you know, we, we, we talk so much about what's happening in the United States and the history making there with uh, Kamala mm -hmm. Harris and the mm -hmm. vice presidential pick yeah. on the Democratic side. So there's symbolism that we keep hearing about uh, when you see a, a black woman, a mixed race woman like Kamala. Let's talk about that. Who are Leslin Lewis's supporters? And You've been talking yeah. to people outside of the Ottawa bubble, as you say. So what are they telling you? And, and are you hearing that symbolism talk? I, I, you hear some of that symbolism talk. Uh, but, you know, what's very also very interesting about Leslie Lewis is she's someone who uh, would self-identify as a social conservative, uh, but not, uh, you know, has seemed to have been able to find some, some nuance in her approaches on policy. So, you know, rather than talking about banning abortions and things like that, which would be pretty, pretty harsh uh, um, uh, perspective within the social conservative realm, you know, she's talking about things like gender selective abortion and, and looking at ways of curtailing that. And, and that's the process that some people go through to, uh, you know, uh, uh, terminate a pregnancy if, uh, if, if the you know, expected baby is not the gender they were looking for. So, you know, I, I think she's been able to find nuance in some of those things. And as a result, she's attracted a lot of conservatives who are not social conservatives. So I know and have spoken with many people who are uh, wouldn't, uh, you know, view themselves socially conservative at all, uh, but they're attracted to the, the fact that she's a successful urban professional woman and a woman of color. Uh, and that that speaks to some things that they think are missing in the party and that they'd like to see more of. And so I, I think she's she's got a lot of crossover appeal. Um, my my prediction. It's always dangerous to make predictions, but mm -hmm. I you know I don't think she's going to win the leadership. But I think there's a very good chance that she'll finish second. Uh, and, but you know never never say never. Uh, lots of things, uh, lots of strange things can happen in politics that people haven't predicted. Mm -hmm. And can we talk about, you know, she is, as you mentioned, the first visible minority woman, first black woman to run for the leadership of the Conservative mm -hmm. Party of Canada. Yeah. What kind <clears throat> of impact do you think that will have, whether she's successful or not here? Well, I, I hope that it has the impact of um, uh, having the party view itself and having others view the party uh, with, a, with a more open and inclusive mind that... Uh, uh, to have other people, uh, especially you know, females in urban areas and ethnic minorities, uh, be able to see themselves in the Conservative Party and feel welcome uh, to uh, to be a part of it. As uh, I think the reality is, they are welcome. Uh, but uh, I think the the image of the party as uh, uh, middle-aged white guys uh, is uh, you know has its limitations. Mm -hmm. Peter McKay and Aaron O'Toole have long been seen as the front runners. What do you think needs to happen? Mm -hmm. What does Leslin Lewis need to do to beat out these well-established candidates? 
Well, I, as I said, I think it'd be a challenge to 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 win this go around. Although I would argue that uh, you know, regardless of the outcome, you know, her campaign has has been the winner uh, of the campaign in the sense that she started from really zero, and mm -hmm. I think she's she's going to finish very well. Uh, and she had like a record I, I fundraising uh, amount the most as well. votes. Yeah, no, she's done very well in fundraising. But you know, one of the things I always look for uh, as a as a camp campaign manager and looking at, uh, at how a campaign is doing on fundraising. It's not just the dollars raised, it's how many individual donations you're getting. Hmm. Uh, and she's been able to attract a, a large number of small donations. Uh, that, that usually speaks very well to someone's populist appeal, They're, you know, that you have a lot of, of people who are willing to give some money to you, um, uh, as opposed to uh, you know, just a competition of how many rich friends you have. So a smaller number of donations that are like $1,500 is not as uh, as good as having 1,500 donations of $5. It's, it's uh, much better to have a larger number. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it will be uh, interesting to watch, no doubt about that, mm -hmm. and you will be watching, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, and, and joining you to talk about it, I hope. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much, Corey. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Have a Co great day. You too. Corey tonight joined us from Kawachin, B.C.